All right, Kevin, back with you for another episode of the Million Dollar Relationships Podcast. And today I am here with Blake Fly. Blake, welcome and so awesome to have you, man. Thank you for having me, Kevin. I'm pumped for this reconnect with you. Yeah, this is, and and I want to give uh, a shout out to Wyra. Uh, you know, you and I got connected through Wyra, and without him, you and I, uh, you know, we've already had one conversation, and I'll tell you, uh, Wyra was right when he was like, Kev, you <laughs> really need to interview Blake for your podcast because he is a guy who just places a really high value on relationships. And so I have been looking forward to this conversation today. Yeah. And, uh, and and Blake, you know, sh from Wyra connecting us and me checking out your website and just seeing the work that you do. I know you and I spoke about it in our, in our first conversation that we had, because, you know, I've, I've got seven kids. And I, it, it wasn't that long ago when my one of my own kids was going through uh, a, a, the, the exact situation that you help a lot of kids deal with. And I remember when I saw mm -hmm. your video on your website, I'm like, you know what? It would have been really cool to have somebody like Blake uh, in Caitlin's life at that time. She, she made it through. She did good. But, you know, you just doing what you do, you, you are impacting a lot of lives and, and we're going to impact a lot of lives today, too. And so absolutely. what I'd like to do, Blake, to start off is I'm just going to turn it over to you so we can set a little bit of context here and give you the opportunity to share, you know, share about the work that you do, what you do, who you serve, what inspires you most about the work that you do. We'll just kind of give you an idea of like, who is Blake Fly and what's Blake all about? Mm. Thank you. Well, I'll I'll take it back a little bit because in the beginning of my business, I was speaking as a motivational speaker, mainly to students. Mm -hmm. And then over the last decade, that has evolved into now mainly working with entrepreneurs, building their business and building their relationships creatively, thoughtfully, unexpectedly, and specifically family-oriented entrepreneurs, just because I'm kind of a a nerd when it comes to like marriage and fatherhood. So my business began because I had a job running university residence buildings back in the day after I graduated from university. And I loved that job with my whole heart because I got to run events in the residences. I got to work with students every day. I had to have the tough conversations when someone got into a fight the night before. I had to have the tough conversations about someone getting kicked out of residence if they, you know, did all the wrong things. But then I also got to do training and facilitation for student leaders on campus. And I fell in love with that work. So I began my business as a speaker, speaking to students transitioning out of high school and into university on how to successfully make that transition. Mm -hmm. Not on just the academic front, but how do you create relationships? How do you make connections in new places? Because when, when we feel connected, we feel safe, we feel engaged, we feel involved. So I kind of like taught friendship, for lack of a better term. <laughs> and I'm not some super extroverted guy. I am extroverted, but I've always needed to think of ways to creatively connect to others. Okay. So that, you know, you, you stand out. Not to be the most popular, but because sometimes it's tough to remember people. There's a lot of people in our life. Mm -hmm. And so I would speak to students and then that over the years evolved, did thousands of presentations across North America. And people started asking me, hey, can you teach sales to our company? I'm like, uh, I sort of teach relationship building to students. I don't teach sales to companies. I'm like, well, fun fact, uh, relationship building is kind of sales. So come talk to our company. So then I started speaking on sales and marketing and relationship building and business. And then I started coaching people on how to build their businesses, how to be speakers, how to book TEDx. Like I've done nine TEDx talks. And so whether it's speaking or coaching or leading group programs, at the end of the day, my main business now is just how do you meaningfully and creatively connect to people to create opportunities for others or for yourself in life and in business? And that might look like how to book a speech. That might look like 
how to bring on 10 new clients. That might look like how to creatively connect with your partner or your kids. And that might look like how to connect to someone if you're in a 40 person Zoom meeting and you say, hey, that person looks great. Let's say hi to them and not get lost in the pile of people on the screen. So that's a little bit about me. But in a nutshell, relationship building is my jam. So I feel honored to get to know your world because you've been waving that flag in a big way. <laughs> well, and I'll tell you, you know, I saw this video on your website where where if I, I if I remember right, you were probably talking to a group of new college freshmen who were yes. just coming into college you know, first day, first week in college, what have you. And and I distinctly remember when my daughter, Caitlin, I mean, you know, it's it's been 10 years ago now, but I can remember this like it was yesterday. And mom mm -hmm. and I going down to college with her, getting her moved in. And that first day, kind of orientation day, and they, and they did have a, a, a get together that evening in the gymnasium for all the new freshmen and stuff. But, you know, and, and specifically for our daughter, she was excited, but also so nervous at the same time because it was just yeah. all new, you know. And, and what you did so brilliantly was just let all these kids know what an amazing experience this was going to be and what all the resources that they had available to them and giving them these tools and, and, and just making them feel right at home and like man this is going to be an amazing experience for you guys you know and uh i just thought that was really cool because you're right you know especially you know I, i'm i'm i i i don't think i'd be considered an introvert although when i was a kid i definitely was and i don't know i mean it, it shifted mm -hmm. at some point and and now i'm pretty outgoing but i totally get it because i have friends who uh, are definitely introverts and and for just to be able to have these tools that to be able to create real meaningful relationships with is just so powerful, so powerful because so much comes from these relationships and uh, especially for us entrepreneurs. And so I wanna switch gears just a little bit and, and I'm gonna reiterate the question for the benefit of the listeners. So have you ever been introduced to a person or persons that completely changed the course of your life or your business so much so that much of what you have today would not be possible if not for this person or persons. And, and Blake, I'm just like really excited to dig into this with you and to hear your story and your experience around this topic of relationships. Yeah, there's a person that floats right to the top in my mind. Okay. And that person's first name is Tony. Okay. And I was introduced to Tony at a pivotal moment, much like the one you just described about your daughter, Caitlin. Okay. Because it was my first day, first few hours in my third year of university. But the reason why it was significant is because I had a brand new part time job as a residence advisor. Okay. Okay. And so that was day one of training. So we were the first ones in the building. Students were not moving in for another two weeks. I was excited. I was nervous. I'm like, okay, this is a cool part-time job. And we got two weeks of training. Let's go. But the first moment of that training, uh, my boss said, hey, I think you're going to really like this guy, Tony, who's kicking off training tonight. You should like go sit near the front. I know, I know you'll like this stuff. I'm like, okay. So that was my loose intro to Tony, but Tony was a speaker. He was kicking off our training. He was essentially setting the entire tone for our school year ahead mm -hmm. as the leaders of the new students coming in a few weeks later. And he began his keynote by just pulling up a chair. There's about a hundred of us in this room. It was like a, a lounge area. There was like a fireplace and couches and high ceilings and a building. And Tony sat in this chair and he just looked at all of us and he said, you're at the beginning of a brand new experience of a brand new school year and the students are not even here yet. They won't be for weeks. And so you've got a special 10, 12 days ahead of you and I'm honored to kick this off. 
for you and with you. So here we go. And then he put the chair off to the side and he just took us on a ride for an hour. It was like watching like Billy Crystal on stage. This guy was so funny, hilarious, so engaging. He's Italian. So he would tell these stories about his Italian parents and use these accents. And like, I was wiping tears laughing. And he was also extremely inspiring and just moving and down to earth and relatable. And I took notes during this guy's talk. And I went up to him at the end. I said, this might sound weird, Tony, but uh, could you sign my notes? Because this was a very foundational event in my life. What you just did here. And I mean it. Like, can you, can you sign these? He's like, uh, sure, yeah, I'll, I'll sign your notes. And then we had laminating privileges as part of that job. So I laminated my notes as a little souvenir from that speech. But the reason why Tony played such a key role back then and still to this day is because I had seen some speakers before when I was a kid, but that was the first time I found out that he was doing that as part of his career. I was like, wait a minute. This guy's like, this is part of his his job like his career what like I, I could do this when i grow up interesting but i saw tony again maybe six months later at another conference and i thought oh my gosh it's, it's the guy again and i felt like i had i had rapport with him even though he didn't know who i was but he gave a speech at this conference maybe 300 of us he's on stage and mid keynote his phone rings <laughs> and he's like this is embarrassing sorry i should have shut this off and then someone in the crowd was like, answer it. <laughs> answer it. <laughs> and it just shifted the whole energy at the event. It's like, whoa, this is super real. Like, is this guy going to answer his phone or what? He's giving a keynote. And he's like, okay. So he answers his phone and it's, and it's his spouse. And they're just having a conversation. And he and his partner are just having an exchange of like, yeah, I'll be home at like seven. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Just send, send me a text. I'm, I'm working right now. Okay. Love you too. <laughs> Bye. Hangs up. The crowd goes wild. Just thinks this is hilarious. This guy just like took a call because someone in the crowd said, take the call. Mm -hmm. And he's just back, back on the road speaking for the rest of the keynote. And it, it's so simple. It was such a tiny moment, but I've never seen something more human mm -hmm. in my life when it comes to someone who's quote unquote working. Mm -hmm. Like that was just so real and so engaging and so relatable. And the reason why Tony has such a big impact on me is because in my speaking career, I emulated that energy, like just the way he showed up in that moment. And part of the thing I teach is how to give appreciation at times when people don't expect it. And so in every keynote that I give, I make a thank phone call, which is basically a prank phone call where you just say thanks to someone when they don't expect to receive that call from you. So I've now made probably 1,700 individual thank phone calls from the stage over the last 12 years. Wow. And wow. so much of that has been inspired by that moment where Tony just took a call. Yeah. But I thought nothing of it. And he's now a dear friend, a great mentor. He's sent me a lot of business over the years. He is just always tracking kind of my journey in business. And um, if he didn't take that phone call while speaking, it still would have had a mega impact on me, how he showed up as a speaker. But him taking that call, it gave me permission to build my entire existence around how to just be super relatable and real and human yeah. in the business building venture. So yeah. thank you, Tony. Man, that is way cool. That is way cool. And so, and, and you figure now at this point, you, did you say the number was 17? There was probably around 1700 calls that you've made over the years. And, uh, yeah. and what a, I mean, just, you know, seven. So were these 1,700 people just random numbers that you dialed? What, what does that look like, Blake? Because now I'm really curious. 
So when I give a speech, I'll say to pe the people in the audience, okay, um, we're about to make a prank phone call okay. live on this stage. And they're just like, oh, whoa, okay. And like the crowd stirs. And if it's student groups, they just like love it. They're like, oh, yeah. Uh. Mm -hmm. And then I say, it's actually going to be a thank phone call, which is a prank phone call. But when they pick up or when it goes to voicemail, I need to thank them for something. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know who I'm about to call. You need to help me decide who's getting this call. So I can't even tell you what I appreciate about this person yet. It's going to be real time once you choose the person. And then I hold up my phone and I bring up the list of contacts on stage while I'm holding it in my hand on my phone. And I just start scrolling. Okay. And then I tell the crowd at some point, I just need you all to scream the word now. And when you scream the word now, I'll stop scrolling. And then I stop and I look, I'm like, okay it landed on and then whoever it lands on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's who gets the call now i might need to scroll up and down a little in case i don't have a, a phone number for that contact yeah but you know i'm usually within five or ten names where i'm like okay cool this person so it's crowdsourced in terms of who gets the call yeah and back in the day i used to get them to vote but then i ended up calling my mom all the time my wife all the time my best friend all the time it was getting predictable so sure. I had to shake it up. Okay. But yeah, every time it's it's unknown. I'd yeah. say there are a lot of people that get multiple calls because mm -hmm. seventeen hundred individual calls over the last decade is that's a lot of phoning. Yeah. But yeah. I think amidst that seventeen hundred, I've probably called I don't know five hundred individual people who didn't get repeat calls. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's profound because if they pick up, it's a freaky experience for me because i start blushing and i don't know how the crowd's gonna react i don't know how they're gonna respond i'm like we could derail this whole speech right here yeah but if it goes to voicemail the crowd's a little bit disappointed in the in the moment but then they love hearing what i say mm -hmm. and when people get that voicemail like if you got a voicemail from me let's say in five years and i just called to say thank you for this episode yeah and then I get a thousand people in the audience cheering for you and like cheering your name or like singing you a song. You're never going to delete that voicemail That's for right. the rest of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> so totally. I've got a lot of people in my world that they just have never, ever deleted that message. And some of them wish they didn't pick up because they would have wanted it to be a recording instead of live. Yeah. 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 Wow. And you know, that. It's so interesting because, you know, I, for years I have been, ever since I learned it, I don't want to act like I came up with this because I certainly didn't, uh, but it would have been, it's it's been uh, 11 years ago that uh, I, I learned this term active appreciation, which is what you're talking about essentially, mm -hmm. right? Is, yeah. and, and, you know, since making a decision 11 years ago that every day, I am going to make it a point to actively appreciate somebody, you know, mm. and some days it's more than one person, but, and, and I, and I, and I teach this thing called the active appreciation challenge to entrepreneurs. And it's kind of, mm. similar. You know, I, I tell them, you know, we've got, we all got cell phones with contacts in it and that can be, right. you know, family members, it can be friends, it can be business associates, but what I want you to do is I want you to, in the next 24 hours, you're going to send out 10 messages, 10 text messages to people in your mm. life. It doesn't matter who it is, but you're going to let those 10 people, you're going to let each of them know one thing that you genuinely appreciate about them. And you're not mm. going to do anything other than that. You're, gonna, you're not going to ask for anything in return. You're not even going to ask for a response in return. You are just right. going to send out some appreciation, send out some love, and you do that with 10 people minimum in 24 hours, and you watch what happens. And yeah. he said, you're going to have such an amazing experience, and so are they, and that you're going to be like, dang, Kev, I want more of that. And, and yeah. you're going to also realize that your own actions facilitated that and that you can facilitate that whenever you want to. 
you can decide, I want to do this every day. Maybe not with 10 people, but I'm going to send a message to at least one person or two persons every day. And uh, because, you know, here's the deal. No matter how, who somebody is, no matter how successful they are, no matter how big business they are, no matter how great things look from the outside looking in, there's not a person on the face of this earth that gets too much appreciation. And yes. what what a unique way that you've been doing this and impacting people's lives and stuff by doing what you do, Blake. And, and I, you know, the, the piece that, that you're in front of an audience, you got this whole audience in the background go, Whoa, how awesome is that, man? How yeah. awesome is that? And uh, so this relationship with Tony has been pretty impactful over the years. I mean, I, I'm just thinking, I, I'm thinking about this, you know, that, you know, all those people, that the, all those 1,700 people that have been on the, the beneficiaries of, of these messages, all those kids that have been part of each of these 1,700 calls, that they got to be a part of that. And they got to, you know, be a part of sending some appreciation to somebody and making somebody's day through these messages. And and who knows the stories that they told and who knows how they've been impacted from that experience and stuff. And, and all this, because you saw Tony speak at a, a, a you know, in, in preparation for you starting this in this new position and stuff. And so I, I want to kind of you know I, I love asking this question because I I know there's more and I I want if if you look at all the things that have transpired uh, over the years, be, you know that that came as a result of this relationship that you have with Tony. I want well, you know what what is like one thing in particular that really stands out for you that where where you were able to have a really big impact and you know hands down that would have never happened if not for this relationship that you and Tony have well i think that the night I first saw him give his speech, mm -hmm. a mentor of mine, another person I adore, her name is Becca. Becca was the one who got up at the end and thanked Tony for okay. his, his speech. And then the next morning at training, Becca said, hey, let's all write a thank you note to Tony just for the impact his, his speech had on you. Yeah. And so it was like a hundred of us or so. So that's a lot of notes. Yeah. And then Becca put all of them into an envelope. But then I forget how she did it, but basically Becca sent it so that Tony would basically like get one note a day. Oh, I think maybe gosh. she sent it to like gosh. his assistant or something. Uh -huh. She right. said, hey, like just send one of those across his desk each day or whatever. So basically Tony had like, a hundred additional touch points of ways in which he impacted individuals yeah. from a speech. Yeah. So even though Becca was involved in this, had I not seen that interaction between Tony giving the talk, Becca acknowledging Tony in, in such a, a, a multi-level manner yeah. where we could have just all said, thank you with clapping yeah. or like, Thank you with a picture. But it was individual thanks from each person in the room. Yeah. And then it was sustained by not just having a hundred messages read at once or sent in an email or something. It was a hundred physical pieces of paper yeah. spanning at least a hundred days. So if not for Tony, I, I likely would have not learned that so anyways, it's not even power just in the appreciation itself, but it's in the the way in which it's delivered. Like I even think with with my wife, if I were to pick up three things that I think she would like, like maybe a 
a coffee and a, a little plant or something and a card. I could give all those to her at one time. <laughs> or I could like give those to her across an evening or across a week. Or I could like hide them and make a scavenger hunt around the house. There's so many ways that the experience of receiving appreciation. Yeah. It's there's there's magic in that. And Tony showed me that. Tony and Becca in collaboration showed me that. And I think I know what it is now. Tony was the one who asked his assistant, hey, someone sent me a hundred thank you cards. Give me one of these once a day. Like he asked to sort of gotcha. span it and extend it. And that's where I learned that really cool insight between Becca and Tony. So yes, how can you appreciate someone, but not all in one swoop on a day they expect, but maybe across time and at unexpected times. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. That's huge. Well, Blake, you know, I, I really want to thank you for taking the time to have this conversation today. For anybody who's listening to this going, dang, Kevin, man, I really like Blake. I like what he stands for. I like the way he shows up. Uh, how, can, how can they find more information on you and what you guys are doing? Uh, two things. One, I feel like I feel like Instagram is a good place. You can kind of find me. I'm okay. just Blake Fly on Instagram, all okay. one word. Send me a message. Say hi. And then something that I love to do on podcasts that's sort of random is I love giving out my actual cell phone number, like directly to me. It's not an opt-in. It's not a funnel. It's like, it's like we're just meeting up. I'm like, here's my cell phone number. Yeah. Because then if you send me a text, you know, we can just say, hey, as humans. So here's my cell phone number. Okay. 647-987-4355. Mm -hmm. I'll say it again like it's 1996. My phone number is 647-987-4359. So if you're ever hearing this message, text me and say, hey, I just heard your episode yep. on Kevin's podcast. And then instantly, we've got such a unique context on the, on the relationship. That's right. It's really fun when I get texts like that because... I know they've listened to this whole conversation and that's just like a beautiful place to begin a new connection. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Well, this has been really amazing. I mean, you, you are a, a real inspiration. I love the work you're doing, the impact you're making in this world. Um, any last thing that you feel led to share Blake before we call it a wrap? I mean, one, one thing I'd love to share, and this actually is what initially connected you to me through Wyra, was I know we've been talking a lot about business and professional world right now, but I'm two years into fatherhood, so still pretty new at it. And one of the things that I love to do in terms of appreciation and connection that people can sort of take from as we wrap is I've got a team of dads who we are making monthly messages, audios and videos that we give our kids later in life so it's called dad's making history okay. and the point is to just have accountability to make a message a month about a moment that we've experienced in the month to then send to our kids later in life so that when we're gone they've got basically like a an audio or video playlist of personalized messages from their dad that they can access whenever Wow. And so whether you're a parent or not, a dad or not, I just wanted to say that because it's like, how can, how can we source moments now, but then deliver them later to people in our life or people in our business to just surprise and delight them. And it doesn't even cost money. You know, it's just thought of you, some sentiments to you, but in a way that maybe they wouldn't expect. So yeah. yeah. Wow. I love this stuff. Thank you for talking about this. Yeah, I mean, wow, that is really cool. That is really cool. And and being the father to seven kids, and heck, now I got six grandkids too, you know. And uh right. It's been a pretty amazing experience. And uh and uh I that what you just shared really resonates with me personally, Blake. And uh mm. I hadn't even considered something like I've done other things. I hadn't considered something like that, but uh, you know, I'm I'm now, now you got me thinking how I can best, you know, incorporate that into my own life with my own kids and stuff. And uh, so, yeah. 
Well, um, Blake, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to have this conversation, eh? because, uh, you know, uh, I, I just really appreciate you sharing from your heart and sharing your experience. And, uh, you know, the goal of this podcast is, you know, to just inspire our listeners who are also entrepreneurs, founders, and CEOs to just place an intentional focus on creating more real, meaningful, rewarding, and profitable relationships in their own life. And we definitely succeeded on that today. I just want to, you know, thank you uh, for your role in that because this has been awesome. So thank you so much, Blake. Really appreciate you. Welcome, Kevin. Until next time. Until next time.